is talking about calling using your mouth. Glory to God. Well, I'm so thankful. The church I got saved in wasn't quiet. Glory to God. Oh, they taught me how to get to the Lord. They taught me how to get heaven to come down and lavish my life with nothing but goodness. Well, you see, your Bible says you have to call. Now listen, listen to me. How did Paul know this? When he got saved, God sent a disciple and told Paul, you call on him. Well, Paul knew how rich he was to him. Paul got saved. Paul got healed. Paul got filled, and Paul got called in the ministry. Right there, when he accepted the Lord and was told to call upon him, God lavished it. Between the power of the Lord and the power of the Spirit, we can walk in perpetual victory. can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. He's rich unto all. He's rich unto all. But you got to learn to use your mouth. Amen. Now notice, please, if you don't mind, 1 Kings, chapter 17. 1 Kings, chapter 17. I'm trying not to wake you up, but I just get excited. The Word of God is absolutely, fantastically, stupendously tremendous. Notice, please, 1 Kings, chapter 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 19. A woman lost her son. Her son died. Verse 19. And Elijah the prophet said unto her, Give me thy son. Bring your boy to me. This boy is dead. But the man of God said, Bring your son to me. Look at the next verse. And he did what? Read it loud. Read it loud. And he did what? Now that's so significant. He has a dead corpse in front of him. But he cried. He cried out unto who? Not Mohammed. Not Buddha. Jehovah. That is so significant. You try calling upon Allah. Nothing will happen. His name is Jehovah. Hallelujah. Notice please. And he called, cried unto the Lord. Look at verse 21. He stretched himself upon the child three times. And he cried unto the Lord. He cried unto the Lord. Verse 22. And the Lord. Who did he cry to? The Lord. Who did he cry to? The Lord. And the Lord did what? Woo! Hey! When you cry to Jesus, he will hear your voice. But you got to open up your mouth and quit being religious. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. Woo! The man used his mouth. He used his voice. And the Lord heard the cry. And read the rest of that verse, please. And the boy was raised from the dead. The boy revived from the dead. That's called a supernatural miracle, isn't it? Amen. How did the man of God get the miracle? 
he cried. He cried out unto God. Here is why, folks. He's rich. He's rich. He's rich unto all who call. I didn't say some. I said all. That includes you. If he's not rich to you, it's because you haven't been calling. It's because you've been religious. It's because you've been trusting the government. It's because you have your confidence in other things. But when you're taught to put your confidence in him, he's the one you call on. Can I get a louder amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33, please. Are you all enjoying this? Well, I'm just trying to digest my food, that's all. Jeremiah 33. Woo woo! Thank God for the word. Because it's all true. It's all right. It's all sure. Notice, please. Call unto me. That's what God wants us all to do. Call unto me. What is his name? Jesus. Say it louder. Jesus. Paul said, you called upon the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. You can't call upon the Lord's name if you don't know it. That's right. What is his name? Jesus. That's the Lord's name. Amen. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He's alive. He has all power. And when you call on him, he'll use his power to move in your behalf to enrich your life. Are y'all still here? Amen. Notice what the Bible says, please. Call unto me and I will. Oh, glory. And I'll answer. You. Notice he only responds to people who call, though. I'll answer you. And I'll show you what? I'll show you great and mighty things. I'll demonstrate my power for you. I'll show you great and mighty things that your mind didn't even think of. I'll show you Great and mighty things. I'll show you. Listen to it, please. I'll show you great and mighty things. If you're just called. If you're just called. See, that's laughed at now in church circles, you know. That's considered old-fashioned and ignorant and naive because we're sophisticated now, you see. So we don't do all that. It don't take all that. Well, if you want him to show you some stuff, that's exactly what you got to do. I will show you. Now, look, please. Now, what Paul, God is saying this to Jeremiah when Israel was in terrible straits. They were in serious trouble. And notice what God says in verse 6. Behold, I will show you great and mighty things. Now verse 6, behold, I will bring it health and cure. And I will cure them. And will reveal unto them the abundance of my what? That word peace is the word shalom. In Hebrew it means prosperity, well off. Notice God says, I'll do this. I know Israel is, is, is in a bad way. But if I can just get people to call, if I can just, see, listen, your household, your life, your family might be in a bad way. But God said, but if you just open your mouth and call, he said, I'll answer. I'll answer you. And I'll show you some stuff. Glory to God. Notice, if you will, Exodus chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the church I got saved in taught me this when I was 17. Hallelujah. And I've lived in it for all my life. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 2, please. Exodus 
And what will bring deliverance to the people of God, they've been taught to sneer at and laugh at. Amen. We don't do that anymore. Well, listen, the nation is what it is because the generation before us did this. Now, we've inherited blessings and we don't know where they come from, and that's why we're losing them. We got to call upon his name. Amen. Notice, if you will, look at verse, chapter 2, look at verse 23. And it came to pass in process of time that the nice king, the good king of Egypt died. We know after he died, a horrible man took over, a bad king. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage of the bad king. And they did what else? Now notice before they cried, they sighed. That word sigh means to moan and groan. Means to lament your plight in life. Means to be sorrowful for what's happening to you. Notice God didn't move just because they were going through a grieving process. They went from moaning and complaining to crying to read it. Who did they cry to read it, please? They cried to who? Now watch. And they cried, and their cry came up unto who? Notice their sighing, their sorrowfulness, their moaning didn't reach God. But when they cried out, that came up. That came up. It came up to God. And notice what happened. Whoa! Look at verse 8 of chapter 3. And God says, I am come down. Whoa! What brought God down when their cries went up? Are y'all in the building? What brought him down is when their cries went up. And notice God says, and I am come down, now watch this, to deliver them. That's all they wanted. I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. That's all they were praying for. But the Bible says he's rich unto all who call. So he goes beyond what you expected. See, I never expected a Cadillac. That was not on my radar. But he gave me more than what I expected, you see. Notice, please. And I've not only come down to set them free from their bondage and to bring them up out of that land unto a large and good land, unto a land flowing with what? Now, they could not even have imagined that. That's not what they asked for. They were crying out just for relief from the Egyptians. But God says, I'm going to give you that. But because I'm rich in the people who call me, i got to give you more. He said, I'm going to bring you to a large and a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Well, you see, that was directly predicated upon them using their mouth. And what did they do? Say it louder, people. Yeah, look at verse 9. Notice what God says. Now, therefore. Now, now is present tense. Now is like now. Watch this. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. Is is present. Now is present. The word is is present tense. Past tense is was. Is means right now. Amen. Now notice God says, now their cries is come. That means they're, they're crying at to me right now. Watch this verse, please. Look at the rest of that verse. And I have, half is past tense. I have also what? Seen is past tense. I have also seen the oppression wherewith Egypt. Now notice what God is saying. What I have seen didn't move me. But what I hear, I respond to. God can see your misery until you die with it. 
it will not move him. I have past tense also seen past tense all their misery. I saw them moaning, groaning, complaining in sorrow. I saw them sighing, but that didn't move me. But when they cried, God said, Phew. God says they are now crying. And it's their cry that moves me. Are y'all here? Amen. So what's the point? Until you use your voice, nothing. He's rich unto all who do what? Who do what? Who do what? Glory to God. Now either your Bible is a joke and we use it just for who knows what. Oh, we read it, believe it, and act on it. Hallelujah. Well, I've decided to believe it. I've acted on it. I know it's true. Are y'all in the room? Glory to God. Notice Psalms 372. Oh, glory. I think I've just about digested my turkey now. Notice Psalm 72, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love this one. I love this one. I just love this one. I just love this one. I just love this one. Look at verse 12, please. Verse 12, 72. For God shall deliver the needy when? I don't know if, if you've ever been needy before. God shall. When you present your need to God in a cry, God shall deliver the needy when? When? The poor also and him that has no helper. Well, that's been me my whole life, you see. But thank God I have help in Jesus. Look at the next verse. He shall spare. Yes, he will. He shall spare the poor and the needy. And shall save the soul of the needy. Look at verse 15. This is what I want you to see. Not only will he save the soul of the needy when the needy cry. Look at verse 15. And he shall live. And to him shall be, this is the needy, not only shall God spare his life, but to him shall be given, what? The gold of Sheba. Now that's the finest of the finest of the gold. Now what is the poor and needy crying for? Just help me. God says, I'll spare you. That's what you want. But I'll go beyond that. I'll give you the finest of the gold.